characters. Like I mean, like great, great oh, '90s grunge. Oh yeah, and you know the BCs were were, were touring for Ill Communications, and oh, you know, man, so it was it was it was a, it was it was a fantastic concert, and and especially man, I've seen them a few times. Sonic Youth. Oh yeah. So at the time it was it was a Jet Set Experimental Trash and No Star was the album that was out at the time, and the yeah. big song was Bull and the Heather. So it was yeah, cool yeah. because no, they didn't just play songs from that. They played songs from Dirty and Washing Machine and Dream Nation, and like it was really cool. And I saw them again years later. I think it was like two thousand one, and they had, they made an album called Murray Street. It was actually a really really good album. I mean, most albums are pretty decent, but Murray Street was uh, pretty exceptional. So you can check that out as well. So that's Sonic Youth Murray Street and check that out. But yeah, it was a uh, uh, these these bands tonight. I just it just it kind of tapping into uh, my 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 teenage years. We'll call it. And I'm <laughs> yeah, and and I'm really enjoying it. So next up is another uh, new submission uh, by you, Mike, and this one we uh, this band we haven't played before. The band is called uh, Plunge. So go ahead. Yeah, Plunge are really cool. I discovered Plunge actually, so I put um put a few posts out uh, maybe a month or two ago, uh, just in various kind of Facebook groups, um, kind of saying you know this is who we are and this is what we want to do, and it was just about you know. Um, we, we kind of want to start doing some more DIY shows and booking some stuff. We're starting to do that. Um, well, as of now, really, and, and we're sort of planning shows for next year and stuff. And I got hundreds of responses, which was really cool. Like literally four or 500 bands, I think, in the end, um, commented or messaged me or emailed us or whatever to say, yeah, we want to play with you. This is who we are and where we're from. Uh, one that was recommended by a good friend of mine, a guy called Mark Stack, um, who's a Brian-based um, uh, promoter and general music lover actually uh, he said oh you should check out Plunge and um and I did, and I really liked them. They're a cool band, and you know, we'd, we'd definitely like to do some stuff with them. Uh, and then uh, yesterday, I think it was, because I subscribed to their band camp, and yesterday I just, uh, it just popped up, oh, Plunder released a new track, and I was like, oh, amazing. And it's a really, really good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I messaged them earlier, and I said, oh, can we play it on the show? And they said, absolutely, go for it. So a uh, quick, sort of late submission, and we just uh-huh. about squeezed it in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wicked. It's proper kind of psyche and trippy. Well, you'll hear it, but it's, it's awesome, man. It's a cool track. And speaking of submissions, man, I can't wait till uh, next Music Saturday, next Saturday, May 20th, because we have a, a brand new one by Static in Verona. We get a lot of cool new stuff, and it's a shame we can't play tomorrow night, but we will be back next Saturday in full force, and we'll have like, a lot of great tunes for you as well that night. So <clears throat> until then, let's go with new submission Plunge, which will be on NMS, hands down, no problem. So this is Plunge with Distress Express. Dig this.
Right on. That was Plunge with Distress Express. And what a heavy tune that was. That was awesome. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? It's like got a little bit of like heaviness. It's got some grunginess. It's got some psychedelic craziness. They're a really, really interesting band. I think it's their debut single, actually, as well. I'm sure there's a video or something, which might be a live thing. I can't remember uh, that, they, that they shared with me. But um, this is their kind of first uh, proper, sort of, you know, recorded single and everything. They're a quartet from, uh, no, they're a quartet. There's four or five of them. Sorry, I can't remember. Uh, they're from Brighton, uh, which is obviously the best city in the world. Uh, and they are top quality. And I really, really enjoy their music. And we would love to play with them at some point. So they're, they're on, a, as I say, a big list of bands that we've got that we want to play. We'll be touring for the next 10 years at this rate. But, um, yeah. <laughs> They're on there and they're proper quality, and because they're local, I'm sure we'll get to play with them pretty soon. So, yeah, looking forward to hearing more, man. But I really, really enjoyed that tune. I was really happy that dropped into my inbox yesterday. Right on. Well, the next two bands we're going to get to tonight, um, they're unfortunately no longer, but they're great bands. And one is from Toronto, which I got to see a few times and interview them as well and hang out with them as well after their show. It's a band called Convoys. This one's called Twister Part 2. Dig this. <laughs> Convoys with Twister Part 2. Now, it's a shame they, they, they call it quits, but man, the few times I saw them live was an awesome show. I saw them for the first time in Toronto, which is about an hour away, east of us. And they went up for a band called Beekeeper. Then I saw them here in London. 
and what a great show. And you know what the the best part about the show is, you know, at the end of, uh, we talked uh, Jason and I. Uh, I mean, I interviewed the whole band, but uh, about a year ago before that, but Jason and I were talking and he said, "Well, here's a package, so a T-shirt, the whole thing." And it says, you want to roll with us? It's like, well, yeah, man, absolutely. So after the show, I just had plan on going home. We done the night, but man, I get to go out and hang out at the bars with with uh, Jason, his wife, and and, and their, their drummer and bassist. It was a lot of fun. Like, great guys. A shame that broke up, but uh, I still keep in touch with Jason, and uh, he, he really is a good guy. And, you know, they initially, when, when they did their stuff, you know, they said, no, we're, we're kind of like a, a, three, a trio of alternative, but we're staying away from all the excessive... Uh, exceptional stuff uh i.e synthesizers that sort of thing and we're gonna keep it kind of straight grunge rock and roll and that is and what a great tune but great band and the shame they broke up but love that band that was convoys with twister part two yeah that's a real shame they broke up that's that's a real tease actually mm. he played me that and know that i'll never be able to hear anything new from them again yeah. <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> how dare you uh, but no that's that's proper good and you're, you're right it's got such a kind of rock and roll beat to it proper um a bit Foo Fighters esque in there, especially at the end. That kind of uh, becomes quite anthemic. The chorus at the end, I think, which is really cool. Um, and just the, yeah, the whole thing had a really cool vibe. But that solo was like really trippy. It just kind of went a bit psychedelic for a little while, and then I think went back to, to straight rock and roll, which is really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah I've really really enjoyed that. It's a real shame they should get back together. You know, for yeah, they, right, should, eh? they should listen to this show and go, <laughs> "What have we done? Let's let's get back together and not ever break up again." They should, you know. A band is like a marriage. You can't just get out of it like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, Jason is a great guy. And when I first met Jason, uh, who's a, who, who was a singer of the band, was when I uh, went to see them in Toronto open up for a band called Beekeeper. My buddy, uh, Mikey uh, uh, P, came with me. And we were talking to him. And at the time, it was kind of funny because this it was about two-year span, right? And you know, there was a girl that they're the dancing around, like loving music and like seemed really to Jason. And then when I, when I saw them uh, about two years ago, so you know, there's about two years span of time. And guess what? Guess who's his wife now? I was like, that's amazing. That's awesome. I was like, wow, like I saw you and I didn't even know if you were, had any tie to Jason at all. And now you're his wife. That's amazing. So, like, a lot of things have progressed, right? So, good, good for him. And uh, it's been a while, but congratulations to, to the happy couple because it was right, right on and, and a great match for sure. So next up is a band uh, I haven't heard anything from them in a long, long time, and I don't think they're still around because there was a bit of a feud, actually a Twitter feud, to be honest with you, because the guitar, the guitarist and and bassist are brothers, and the drummer is a friend of theirs, and there was a bit, little bit of a Twitter feud online. I mean, obviously, I just kind of watching it involves like, oh, what are you guys doing, man? You're kind of taking the wrong route. But either way, they're still a very cool band. The band's called Those Makeshift Heroes. The song's called Enough Is Enough. Dig this. Mm-hmm. 